Okay, James, so we've gone through uh, most of the machine. So just for our, uh, our customers, um, we've taken the cover off the RP1200. If you just go through the, um, the internals of the machine, these machines are designed to be uh, worked hard and also designed to be serviced. Um, can you just take us through the internals of the machine? Yep, sure thing. So the cream of the machine is probably the first thing you'll notice when you take the cover off. They're very, very neat. Everything's very neat and tidy. All your cables are tied up. Everything's got its own little place. There's nothing messy or scruffy underneath here. So basically, starting at the front, we've got our water coming in, flows through in here to a 15 litre inlet tank, which operates with a float valve. So you've always got a um, supply of water there to avoid any cavitation or any air bubbles or anything that you may have in your hose or your water supply. Okay, so the pump sucks the water out of the bottom of the tank via this suction hose into the bottom of the brass pump head. These brass pump heads, we offer a 10 year warranty on those. Now, on the bottom of your pump head, you've got three inlet valves. At the top, you've got your three outlet valves. And here is what we call the unloader. So every time you trigger on, trigger off, that runs the pump into bypass. Also, if you're running this machine in a steam application or you wish to reduce your pressure for whatever reason, if you've got a delicate job, etc., you can wind your pressure down by simply twisting it anti-clockwise. You've got the minus and the plus on the end of the knob there. So all the way in tight is max pressure. Back it out to reduce your pressure or lower your pressure down if you're doing steam. It runs through this new crankshaft pump by Cranzel. Um, these pumps are their severe duty version. They've got an enlarged oil chamber on the back here for longer service live um, to cope with the wear and tear. Okay, so we've got our water coming out the top here, top of the pump head here under pressure through that rubber connecting hose up through here. We've got a dampener on there to avoid any cavitation or jarring in the process. Through the uh, safety block here, which is secondary to the unloader, so this is set 10% higher than the unloader, so if anything was to go amiss internally in the machine, it would dump the water straight back into the tank and bypass. Once it goes through the safety block, it goes past the flow switch here. The flow switch basically tells the machine, yes, there's water going past, going into the coil, and we can heat it. So the water goes in the top here, comes out this side here heated, um, inside the coil, what's going on basically is the um, <clears throat> we've got fuel coming in via the um, fuel filter, fuel pump, piggybacked off the fan blower motor. So we've got fuel coming in the top. We've got an ignition coil here running a spark into your electrodes. We've got a fan blower motor down the bottom here blowing air up from the bottom. So over here in the top of the coil, we've got the magic eye which tells the computer that yes, it's burning or no, it's not, there's an issue. We've got the fuel going in through the injector nozzle. We've got your electrodes in the top. So that creates a flame <clears throat> with your fan blowing up from the bottom that circulates your heat around your coil. Comes out the exhaust here. There's also an exhaust temperature monitor here to make sure everything's under control. So as it leaves the coil, it is the temperature is measured here at the back of this T-piece which is what's displayed on your screen at the front. So what you see on your screen is 100% accurate, the water leaves the coil. So from here, it comes down through the rubber hose, back around to the front of the machine, through the connection here, straight up into your hose reel, through your reel, into your gun, and away you go.